So in these Champions League previews, I tend to focus on the opposition quite a bit. How is Juventus, with all their global superstars, going to match up with Barcelona? How is scrappy Ferran Varos, finally making their return to the biggest European stage after two plus decades going to fare? But due to Barca's recent form in the Liga, coupled with the constant reminder that COVID-19 is not only still around, but is still a major threat to get a starring role in world football, you are left with a Champions League preview stripped of its regular intrigue, and honestly, I consider not doing it at all. But like Bielsa has showed us, being a completist doesn't always lead to results, but it does look good on a resume. Last note, I do take the pronunciation responses seriously, and I always strive to be better. But this is one video that I may need to take a class for afterwards, so you have been warned. So here we go. Let's preview Barcelona against Dinamo Kiev in the Champions League, though it does feel more like a PSA to take coronavirus seriously. The other note here is that the information about this match is updated and based on figures and information from Monday night, so things could have changed again prior to the match. For those who might not know what I'm referring to, up to 11 first-team players could be missing for Dynamo Kiev, plus the assistant head coach and at least four other staff members. That's a lot of people. But I do want to add the disclaimer that it doesn't say much about the situation of COVID in Ukraine compared to Spain. Of the 41.98 million people in Ukraine, there have been just over 402,000 cases reported. In Spain, with its population of 46.94 million, there have been 1.19 million cases, 228,000 of which have been in Catalonia. Now, Spain could be conducting a lot more tests in Ukraine, but my point is, this virus is everywhere. Cases are on the rise on a global level everywhere again. And I get the sense that we are on the verge, once more, of asking whether or not these matches can go on, particularly when teams in Europe are traveling between countries. The money involved in Champions League competition indicates that where there's a will, I mean money, there will be a way. But still, having a Champions League fixture where one team is missing over half of their squad does make you wonder about the integrity of this competition. And before you say, oh, the Dynamo Kiev players could infect the Barca players, well, three Barca players have already had it, and Nikola Mirotic, star of the Barca basketball team, is currently recovering from it. If the players that will suit up have passed testing, then that's the situation we're dealing with. Okay, so before we hit Barca with its many storylines, let's go over the Ukrainian opponents. The biggest losses again at present moment, it's 13 missing players, 9 with the virus, 1 suspended, and 3 injured. The biggest loss is in net, with first choice keeper Georgie Bushkan and backup Denis Boitko both out. Third choice and youth keeper 18-year-old Ruslan Nesharet will be starting his second first team match, the first coming last weekend. So I know Barca fans are still frustrated from what we saw from Pacheco for Alaves, but a similar performance from Nesharet would make for a night that we won't soon forget. When these teams met all the way back in the 90s, it was a monumental win for the Dream Team in one of their best matches ever. But Kiev could certainly change that fortune with a big match from the underdogs. The other big losses are directly in front of the keeper, with regular starters in centre-back Mitka Berta, left-back Vitaly Mitskelenko, and right-back Oleksandr Karavev. The midfield is missing Mikola Shaparenko, Tuta Baluda, and Denis Garmash. And the forwards are without Mikhail Delund and Georgi Tvaidivishvali. As I said, from that bunch, the biggest losses are on the defensive side of the ball. The attack is actually pretty intact, with all but one of this year's goal scorers, two total goals. That's from 26 goals from 10 players since the start of Champions League qualification and the Ukrainian Premier League, fit to suit up against Barca. The leaders are Ukrainian right winger Viktor Svikingov and Uruguayan left winger Carlos de Pena. Center forwards Vladislav Supraga or Gerson Rodriguez round out the front three, with winger Benjamin Verbrich also being an option. 21-year-old Denis Popov is the other name to watch, as he's going to have a lot to do without his normal backline mates. Needless to say, manager Mircea Luchesco doesn't have many decisions to make other than how he will set up his ragtag group. But hey, Shakhtar Donetsk, with a ton of second stringers themselves, did beat Real Madrid 3-2 the other week. So what of Barca, who were just missing Coutinho and Araujo? I'd say a start for Desk could be in the cards, but don't be surprised if the rest of the squad is not as rotated as some might think. Matches are happening every time you blink. But this is a team with a few players in need of form and confidence. I was wrong last time, but I expect Griezmann to get the start. If he can't get past this back line, then maybe already thrown up hands will just be permanently up in the air. Every time I say this is a spot we might see Trincao, we don't. So maybe another Dembele showing. As for the left wing, it's Fati or Pedri, depending on who Komen wants to give some rest to or rotate. Just going off of last match and Komen's post-match comments, I think we see Pedri start and Fati come off the bench. In the midfield, I think it's Pjanic again. Even though it's an entirely different competition and Barca played well against Juventus last week, this is a squad that is desperate to put multiple good performances in a row, something they haven't done yet this year. I always tell you not to feel entitled to a win, but playing a depleted side at home is a match that Barca shouldn't only win, but dominate. When I said rotation, you might have thought about Ricky Puj, so make sure you check out my thoughts on him, and we'll see you back here for the next one. Until next time, Forza Barca!